Welcome to the Conversion Stack, um, episode one. Today you get to meet myself and Mark. Um, we will both be at this podcast a lot, along with other individuals from our company and guests. Um, we talk today about some of the big challenges that high growth companies face, um, why they face those challenges, a proposed solution and really our framework for helping companies achieve measurable and scalable growth. Um, and really what the outcome of that is, which is effective, creative, and strategic marketing. So let's dive in. Episode one of the Conversion Stack. I'm Mark Bunker. I am the lead designer or lead of production at OM. And I'm here with Daniel Sosa, who will be here with you every week, every two weeks, mm -hmm. we'll find out. Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us what the podcast is going to be all about. Yeah. So to clear that up, we'll be here every two weeks. There you go. On the conversion stack. Um, my name is Daniel Sosa, CEO of OM Growth. And really what we wanted to do is create a podcast about the state of marketing today. Is that the state of marketing today is just not good. Like I mentioned, we work with amazing companies and they have great product market fit and they seem to just slug it out through product market fit and sales. And what we want to do is really create marketing and demand as a core component of your business so you can have effective growth. Cool. I've been working with you for what, five years, longer in some capacity, 10 years maybe, mm -hmm. uh, but five years probably at OM. We've dug into a lot of different companies and uncover all their analytics, just like in a little bit more detail or what's like the one overriding theme that you see that like is going wrong with marketing? I mentioned the state of marketing is, is poor. Um, and then you look at LinkedIn and everything is make this one move for 1000% growth. Um, and I think that ends up throwing everyone into what we call whack-a-mole marketing, where the reality is what we see Again, product market fit companies need effective fundamentals of marketing, of digital marketing in place, and they need frameworks and processes to bridge the gap between strategy and execution. Got it. Um, and I think those are two loaded concepts that I think we'll dig into a lot more. But the overarching takeaway is the fundamentals really matter if you want to build great marketing. And we need to find a way to marry strategy and execution in a world where there's, I like to say, almost too much strategy and not enough execution. Um, and we need to bring that together. Cool. And I know we always talk about, or you always talk about this idea of like whack-a-mole marketing, which for anybody who's not familiar with it is kind of like execution without strategy, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like doing a bunch of tactics. You might be doing an amazing podcast. You might be doing blog posts. You might be doing Facebook ads, but none of them are like tied together, right? It's all just like, what are we going to do this week? Yeah. Is that pretty accurate? I mentioned bridging strategy and execution. They spend all this time creating an amazing strategy, really smart people up top, but then really what they deploy throughout the quarter is more PPC and maybe scramble through a webinar. Yeah. And we really want to like bring that level of intentionality into that. And I'm a stupid designer, right? But I've been around marketing enough to maybe talk the language. <laughs> but on the opposite side, it seems like then there's strategy with little execution. And I think that's where the conversion stack comes in, which is the name of this podcast. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell us like what the conversion stack is? The conversion stack is what we call the core components of an effective marketing framework. And that is really building out the pieces that you need to deploy marketing strategies <clears throat> and execute marketing strategies. So that is, do you have your fundamentals of digital marketing in place? All the tools that you need to deploy your message and campaigns and guide people through the buyer's journey. Yeah, right on. I mean, all those things that you just listed, we could Google it and you could find like best practices for probably doing each one of those, right? Mm -hmm. And I know you've talked about a lot of like anybody who has an Instagram account can be a digital marketer, right? There's all these things that you can find online or classes that you can take to be a marketer. When we were talking earlier and you say like 80% of companies really struggle at having the strategy and the execution, what are some of those problems or what's like preventing companies from really doing that? Because essentially anybody could do it, right? Maybe anybody yeah. could do anything. <laughs> I mean, um, anybody could be a designer, <laughs> right? Like you could download the software and like start creating a logo or 
you could get into Webflow and just create a website, right? Yeah. I mean, and then call yourself a designer and start selling your services. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like that's a little bit the same for marketing, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then if people do that, why are they maybe not getting the results that they're looking for? I think anyone can be a marketer and anyone can be a designer to some extent, but these are skills that have levels of talent, experience, and practice. Yeah. Creating demand especially in today's world where the consumer is so empowered, is actually a very difficult task. And not only do you need experience, skills, and resources, you need frameworks to deploy that experience, skills, and yeah. resources. In today's world, anyone with an Instagram account as a digital marketer, you have these inexperienced marketers working at these large companies or great companies that maybe don't understand marketing and demand gen mm -hmm. enough. Um, trying to deploy a strategy and that's often where it fails. Yeah. You asked about what are some of the key hurdles and problems that drive that. Um, and there's a few and, and some that I think are really, really important. One that we see a ton is marketing teams are under-resourced. We call that lack of full stack execution. Like lack of people? Yes. Okay. Lack of people and experience and then budget. Got it. A lot of high growth companies spend millions of dollars on product. They spend millions of dollars on sales teams and sales software. And again, they have that one marketer doing everything possible to feed the pipeline. Yep. And that is a big challenge. Yeah. I mean, I see that a lot in the design world. It's like everybody, maybe this was like five years ago, but everybody, there's like a big movement that everybody wanted to be like, uh, I have like design led teams or like put a real emphasis on like design and UX and then you'd look at a company and they had like one designer. Yeah. And it was like somebody straight out of college who is now a UX designer, a graphic designer. And they're like, oh, can you code too? And it's like, this is not how you like. So it was like leadership saying they wanted to be like design led, but then they didn't have the budget or they really didn't like know how to do it. And I feel like that's where the marketing world is a little bit right now of like, oh, we see everybody on LinkedIn doing these great campaigns or like we see Apple, whoever, like mm -hmm. executing all this stuff on LinkedIn. And then, oh, we'll just do it and we'll hire like somebody out of college with like a marketing degree, right? Or somebody with 20 years experience in the field who's been a CMO and support them with like no team or no resources. Yeah. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. And the designer is a good example. Very often you have that one marketer pulling from every other comp piece of the company for his resources. Right. And design and development being a big piece of it. So right. all of a sudden you have an execution roadmap where you need to deploy a verticalized campaign or that podcast that we spoke about. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's reverting to Canva for designs or trying to piece together a landing page with some WYSIWYG tools. It's like we're not able to deploy and have that full stack execution resources to deploy professional campaigns. Yeah, I think we've seen it in cases too where it's like, they'll have a great product team, right? So they'll have like developers and designers who are like working on the product and then it's like a small marketing team and once they need to actually do those production items, they pull from their product team. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like one of those things where it's like low priority, the product team isn't super into it. They've never created like a landing page. Maybe they're using like WordPress for the first time. So it's like all these things are just kind of like out of whack and end up being like an afterthought instead of actually something that's like really important to the company. Yeah. So I guess that thing of like, hey, we say we want to do it and like the marketer really wants to do it. But then when it comes to production, other people on the team, it's just like, uh, we'll do it when we have time and we'll get out of the way and get back to like our core product and yeah. core job function. 10 years ago, product development was really hard. Yeah. Finding developers was really hard. Yep. In today's world, product development is not the hardest thing to do. Right. Demand creation and attention is the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Um, I have a hard time figuring out where to put my attention because there's so much to focus on um, and life has become so busy. And I think we're seeing this shift where and companies are not caught up because of the, the rate of marketing, which we'll talk more about later. We're still stuck over investing in product where product is a defined process of creation um, and under investing in marketing and demand creation. And then you're basically always chasing that, yeah. that, that growth machine. Well, we could just jump into it now. You talked about like how marketing is like changing, right? Mm -hmm. At the rate that, or the speed that's changing. So are, 
and we've, we've talked about it internally, but I think even when we started out working together a long time ago, it was like, just how can we capture like email addresses, right? Yeah. And I think that's probably like changed a lot. Are people kind of like still stuck in that mindset or are people not like innovating enough or what's kind of the problem there when people are trying to, you know, create a whole like marketing system or digital marketing system? The rate of progression in digital marketing is almost too fast for companies. Right. Um, and obviously I'm biased. I work at a digital marketing agency, but working in these marketing groups is one of the only ways to stay ahead and, and, and be able to match the speed of the consumer. Even if we look at the last five years, all of a sudden we had cookie list tracking come, um, which changed a lot of how we operate. Then we had COVID. Now we have chat GPT. Now the economy is changing. Yeah. The need to be dynamic and always learning and not just siloed into one function of marketing in, in one division or one department yeah, yeah. is really a, a requirement. Yeah. So it takes like an entire team focused on it, it seems like, right? And requires somebody who's doing it every day or staying on top of like all of the changes. I want to say fads, although we know chat GPT is just a fad. <laughs> <laughs> And it's really not. like living and breathing it more so than just like managing some people in it, which I think when we, you see like a single marketer in a company, they end up being a manager more than probably an executioner. Bring it back to a real life example that you mentioned is the lead gen topic, which is hot right now, especially for anyone here that spent a lot of time on, on LinkedIn five years ago, which is a tiny amount of time. Right. You had to do email capture. The internet user was less mature than it is today. That was the only way to begin a sales funnel. Yep. In today's world, I have access to everyone's contact that is at any business. And it's a lot less about putting that lead in the CRM and Facebook lead forms, which are really cheap ways to get contacts mm -hmm. um, that don't engage with your sales team. And it's all about how you capture that attention, how do you capture that demand, how do you properly track it, and how do you get individuals in your pipeline to drive revenue. The strategies from lead gen to demand generation are very different. We're mm -hmm. looking at the full journey. We're looking at the conversion point of that full journey, which again, that's going back to the conversion stack. Um, a lot more than how do we get a clickbait style ad or a form on a website to capture a contact. Yeah, it's just kind of like old school marketing at this point, mm -hmm. which is more like four or five years ago, but we'll call that old school. So you talk about needing these different job or skill sets, even within just marketing. And then you need multiple skill sets that know conversion marketing, um, you know, whether it's a designer or developer, we can get more into that. And I know we'll talk about that in other episodes, but when you're starting, whether you're like an agency and you're looking for talent or you're trying to grow your marketing team in-house, what's the challenge there? I mean, why can't I just go out and hire like the five people I need for a team, right? get my point guard, my shooting guard, my center, and yeah. just throw a team out on the court and start winning. <laughs> I like that. I think the, um, the reality is, and, and both for companies and for us, is hiring is tough, slow, and expensive. Mm -hmm. um, we just spoke about the rate of progression in, in digital marketing. Even ignoring the last five years, digital marketing is a 20-year-old industry. Um, and what you did 20 years ago is obsolete yep. today. Um, so there's not a large talent pool. That's where, why this name of unicorn marketer exists because they don't exist. It's probably it used to be like unicorn developers or where they call them like a 10x developer, yeah. right? And then anyway, I feel like that was like a designer slash developer who could do it all. And now it's like transitioned to marketing. Yeah. The, the company's trying to figure out that component of their, their business. So you're either looking for that individual, which is very rare and it's typically a highly motivated experienced individual that worked in the agency world and was able to achieve that rate of, of growth. So I should feel special that I'm sitting next to a unicorn right now. You'll get there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other part of it is because the industry is so young, a lot of marketers today have trained under individuals that have not had that level of tactical experience in their careers. Mm -hmm. They're maybe caught in the transition between more traditional and, and modern day marketing. Yep. Um, so even the younger marketers that are getting that tactical experience are not getting expert tactical experience. I'll call it my corporate job, whatever, 10 years ago was because I was like designing and then I get up to a level where now I'm just like managing and I was in like spreadsheets and I was like, man, like I'm, I don't even, like I'm not even jumping in design software. 
Yeah. Like <laughs> if I look for another job at some point, am I even going to have like design stuff to show? And I think that probably happens a little bit in the marketing world too, is like you're in the trenches doing the work and then at some point you become a manager and then you might take a job somewhere else and you're managing, but you haven't really seen the Google analytics updates, right? You haven't seen like the Facebook ads updates. And if you have to now teach somebody coming in the platform, it's like you jump in and over two years, it could be completely different. Oh yeah. And not to, not to expose myself, but you know, GA4, which I'm sure a lot of people here are dealing with, and I am pretty close to execution still these days is like things like GA4 are very alienating to me already, right? I'll jump into some of our ad accounts with, with some of our team members and I begin to feel alienated. Yep. Um, and that's how fast the rate of progression is happening in, in digital marketing. So I know it's easy to like call out all the problems in the world, right? Mm -hmm. But even our own ethos at our company is, you know, find solutions, not problems. Yeah. So a main focus of this podcast going forward will be like addressing a lot of these things and looking at the solutions and, you know, hopefully some of these problems resonate with people listening or watching. Can you just touch on like some of the solutions that we'll be going over in the future in more detail and just how you attack and how we've even attacked some of these problems and how other people can use it in their own companies yeah. um, to either hire the right people, create the right conversion stack, you know, all the kind of things you just went over. Cool. Um, and especially being this is podcast number one, I want to make it as simple and clear as possible so we can consume and prepare for the future. And the way I want to communicate this is marketing leaders need to find a way to bridge the gap between strategy and execution. And the way to do that at a high level is technical marketing expertise. You need technical marketing expertise to succeed in today's digital environment. You need full stack execution. Um, full stack marketing resources. We don't need to be pulling resources from different teams. We don't need sliced skill sets. We need to be able to have our designers, our developers, our analytics experts, our marketers um, in a way that they collaborate. Can you explain full stack execution? Yeah, full stack execution is having the full stack resources to deploy a strategy. So um, full stack being all the right people and skills? Correct. Okay. Full stack is the right people and skill. We talk about the comparison between development and marketing, mm -hmm. right? For the past five years, 10 years, we've been talking about full stack developers. Right, that's, um, a, that's how I'm used to hearing it. They can go from back end to front end. Um, and now a lot of what I'm gonna push for and preach for is how we bring that same thought process into marketing. Cool. People that can market from all the way from the back end to the front end. Um, that's that messaging and distribution strategy at the front end. The back end, you deeply understand event-based tracking in Google Tag Manager and how you find those intent signals from your customers Got or it. your prospects. And just to kind of close this, if we have technical expertise and full stack execution deployed with a framework or a cohesive strategy, if maybe it's a way other people will think about this. Mm -hmm. um, but there's definitely a component of, do we have the skill sets? Do we have the resources? And as a team, can we operate in a way where all this deep strategy that is being created can actually be deployed effectively and not get caught into whack-a-mole marketing, which we discussed earlier. I mean, we talked about the difficulties of hiring, finding the right people. How do you solve for that? That seems like a pretty big problem to try to figure out. The best I can speak to that is how we solve it. The way we solve it is creating processes and systems to educate and bring exposure to our team. Um, we hire hungry individuals that want to be experts at their craft, um, and we give them framework, playbooks, processes um, and exposure, right? Exposure is really, really important. People need to understand that it's more than PPC, it's mm -hmm. a business. Um, right. And you need to see how CMOs talk about the business and CEOs talk about the business. Um, too many marketers are just marketers where marketing is a component of business and the more people understand business, the better marketers they're gonna be. Right, we're trying to grow your business, not just your marketing or just your leads, like yeah. it has to be all integrated. I think it took us time to figure that out and it's proven to be pretty fruitful once we did is that, you know, you could spend money hiring like experienced people that you then have to train anyway, <laughs> or maybe set in their ways and don't want to change or like think they know it all. Or you can hire young, hungry people who you can train and kind of like teach them our methodology, right? And work within like a proven framework. And yeah, I think we, we spent uh, I've talked about how rare technical expertise marketing talent is, and we struggled with it so much. A big part of our growth strategy has become let's be the engine for those mm -hmm. individuals. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing worth mentioning there is it's also about having leadership that's been in the trenches. Yep. Um, that has executed in the past 
five, ten years, understands what's going on at the ground level, and they themselves are up to date. Yep. So we can bring that down to the team. Yeah, for sure. You need to be able to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Yep. Is that a saying? That might be a saying. <laughs> we just made it, I just made it a saying if it wasn't. As we shift into solution, what are the big things companies need? We talked about um, technical expertise. We talked about full stack execution. We talked about having frameworks and systems to actually deploy your strategy. Um, and a lot of what I want to spend time on in these conversations and in these podcasts is how do we get past creating that conversion stack? How do we get past having those resources and those technical expertise so we can get companies to a stage where they have measurable and scalable growth? And the way to do that is you have that complete conversion stack, you have those technical resources, you have that full stack execution, and now your operating process is really turning over the strategy. Hey, we have all the pieces that we need to be creative. We have all the pieces that we need to measure our marketing. Um, now like true marketing happens and true marketing is strategic, it's creative, it has insights into the revenue. Too many companies are stuck, again, solving problems, solving the analytics, finding reports for their team. That, that conversion stack is not in place and it makes it really difficult to do expert marketing. Even though we're technical marketers, um, my goal is to build that conversion stack so we can be creative marketers, so we can get to that brand marketing that people aspire for and what you see on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, but that conversion stack needs to be in place. Even when we come in and we're like, we're going to build your foundation, we're going to get things in order, like week two will end up being like, hey, we need a report of how many, like we ran this podcast, how many customers did it convert into? And it's like, well, <laughs> you might be like trying to dig for the wrong answers or like if things aren't in place, you can't even get the right answers. And if that was just your world, like chasing your tail and trying to like always scramble to find the right report or get the right answers, you haven't even done like the fundamental work to find those answers. Yeah, and I think, you know, we see great marketing um, and we all aspire for great marketing. I like to use companies that everyone knows. You, you think of Geico with the Gecko. Yeah. Um, or you see Apple, how they deploy their core messaging, whether it's camera or, yeah. or privacy. Um, they have such good conversion stack, such good component of their demand systems that they can just now deploy. Yeah, and um, nobody sees that. Nobody sees that, yeah. Right, and nobody likes to think about that. It's just like, oh, I just want to create, like, let me go to a creative agency and like make me the next Apple commercial. Yeah. Right. And then we'll get all those customers. Yeah. And then they have a beautiful PDF with a great, <laughs> with a great campaign, but they don't have the stack to deploy that. Right. Um, right, right. And what, again, we want to bring that together and that's what's going to drive world-class marketing. Cool. Well, I think that wraps us up for today, Dan. Um, any parting thoughts? No, I'm excited to go through this. I'm excited to speak, um, not just the fluff marketing that we hear a lot about, but get deep into the weeds of challenges and, and, and possible solutions companies have. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining us. Would appreciate feedback and, 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 and insights as we continue to do this. So don't forget to join us on your favorite podcast platform, follow us on YouTube, follow us on social media, um, and let's build some relationships. Smash that like button. Do it. <laughs>